My name's David Siegel. I've made a minimalist sled that's great for quick cuts where you just want to get it out and make a fast, accurate cut with no base and a bunch of interesting details. I've set up to rip this at seven and a half inches. Anywhere between seven and a half and eight inches is good. All right, you can see there is a bow here. This is a bow of about an eighth of an inch. And so my goal, I'm going to, I'm going to split this in half and lay it up. And this, this is the treated side. This is the untreated side. And I'm going to score this, especially more in the middle than, in, than on the sides. Those scores are just going to be in the middle, but you'll never see that because they'll be obscured by the track that will go in across the top. Now I just going to rip this down the center. This is exactly what I expected. This is pretty close to the same. It's, it's only an eighth of an inch off, so that'll all trim off. And now that should help me get a nice flat glue up. I'm ready to lay up. I don't think it matters. Generally want to just try to align one side and not worry about the other side. I'm gonna be trimming it anyway. And now for a layup like this that involves Flattening, I like to just keep it flat instead of using clamps. Just use flat surfaces and weight. That's how you make a straight fence out of bowed plywood. 
In the video that follows, I'm going to be using a different fence that didn't need as much cutting and has already been trimmed. This is going to be a very minimalist sled. Almost every sled you see, there's a bottom piece, a flat piece at the bottom. It either extends and there's a kerf in it or it just supports the fence like this because that's what slides and you have a nice flat bottom there to slide on top of the table. In my case, the fence is going to be in front and so this is going to be, is going to be sliding. But this has to be very smooth so it can, it can go back and forth with little friction. It also has to be very flat because if, if it's bowed like this, then it's going to catch at the ends or if it's bowed like this, then it's not going to go very well. So I have to work a little bit on this to make it as flat and as smooth as I can. For a short job like this, I actually like working with my Dura Grit sanding blocks. Uh, but of course you could just run it through the table saw and get it done much quicker. First I'll use a 45 degree chamfer bit to relieve a bit of the area underneath at the bottom of the fence so that a little bit of dust doesn't get in the way of my workpiece. And then I'll round off the top just to make it a little more comfortable for my fingers. This is going to be a long cut where I'm going to put the dovetail into the front of the fence all the way along. And to make a 3 8 inch dovetail track all the way along, is going to remove a lot of material and throw a lot of dust. So I'm going to do it in three passes and that'll reduce the stress on the router and the stress on me, reduce the noise and reduce the dust per pass so it's more manageable. Uh, and I'm using my two micro jig pushers that I've set up both with what I call a feather board attachment to push this way and this one has a tail piece push the final. So I, I'm trying to do it by not changing hand positions. I've angled this one a little bit so I can get, so I can keep the pressure on the fence. And when I do a long push like this against the router, I like to have my body behind. I don't want to be on the side moving across my body. I want to be behind using my legs going forward. Easy to adjust this. That's it. That's three eighths. This is a dovetail bit by Micro Jig that has a few little special features just for the match fit system. And when this is in, I'll make a, uh, a stop block for it. And here we have one nice straight cut with just a little bit of fuzz to clean up. This is the front face. I want to make a cut on the back face to store my, my stop block and 
I don't want to make it at the same height because then it'll drag when I move the fence forward. Forward is up. So I want to make it a little off the ground. I've waxed the bottom here and now I'm just going to buff it out so it comes out nice and nice and smooth. So one thing at a time. The first thing I want to do is get this at right angles to the fence and that will be ready soon. One thing at a time. Oh, it's fine. <sighs> Water. The thing. That's better. <clears throat> Still tear out. Look at that. This is on the bottom. So that's fine. Look at that. That carcass. So these holes are just for grabbing and picking up and moving They're around. All They're all dead. Now run. I've made a lot of runners. I've made them out of maple, plastic. I've cut them out of aluminum. And I've learned a few basic things that I hope will help you understanding runners and how to install them and align them to your sled. So the first thing is that it's possible to make uh, these tracks have a, an inner slot that lets you hold down with a flange like this and you have to insert it and then it won't and then it's trapped and I don't see any use for these. I've tried them and they're just they're just a pain. So uh, I, I would not recommend those. Second, you can see lots of videos online about how to make runners out of plastic and you might be able to do it quickly and it might be perfect, but I think I have found a better solution. And that's T-Track. This three quarter inch T-Track fits exactly in the slot. This is about $6 worth of aluminum. It's not very expensive and it's pre-drilled and ready to go. It, takes, it really takes just minutes to cut and install a runner out of aluminum. T-Track. And so I'm going to show you how to do that and I'm going to show a method for installing and aligning to the fence that works with any sled. You don't need a five cut method. You don't need anything exotic. The method is called the three hole method and there are three critical holes to make. There's the pivot hole, the adjustment hole, and then the set hole. This is how you do the three hole method. You want to put a start with a piece of aluminum T-track that extends 10 to 12 inches out from the fence. 12 inches is better. And then just use a good strong screw that is the right length so it doesn't come through the, uh, the other end. And that will give you a good pivot anchor to start with. This is a countersunk hole that you screw in nice and snug to give you a strong pivot. That's number one. The second hole is called the adjustment hole. And this is made with a pretty big drill bit and a pan head screw that is quite a bit smaller than the body of the bit. In fact, you can see that the bit is almost the size of the head so that the hole it's made gives you lots of wiggle room, but still the head will come down onto the, onto the aluminum. And you're going to pre-drill these holes before you put it in the wood. So you're just going to have a piece of aluminum with three holes in it that I can't show you because this is down. You'll make the countersunk hole and then the adjustment hole. And then right after that, this final set screw is going to be done using a hole that is just the size of the shaft of the screw. Should be a nice tight fit and another pan head for locking down. I'll show you how that works. 
So you're gonna have three pre-drilled holes in the aluminum and no holes in the wood when you put this down. You're gonna put the first countersunk pivot hole in. Put this in wherever you feel comfortable. You know you can just place it wherever you want that track to be. And screw this in nice and tight. And I use a bolt here, but you can just use a screw. Now the second hole, you're just looking at some wood underneath, so you're gonna use a self-centering small bit to put in the pilot hole into that second adjustment hole. And then you'll screw this in. It should be a good tight fit with your pilot hole. And this distance between the shaft and the side of the hole gives you wiggle room. Now you can turn it over and most fences have a, have a chamfer here, 45 degree chamfer, that makes it a little tricky to put the triangle into. So I use a piece of aluminum like this. A 90 degree square that is at least 10 and even better 12 inches. And then you're not going to use the blade, you're going to use the track itself. And all you need to do is get about a, you know, a thumbnail or a, a fingernail's width all the way. And so you're going to move your fence until you get this really square, perfectly aligned with the slot. Then you'll, get, you'll, you'll pull it up and you'll tighten that adjustment screws down so that it holds. And then you can make a number of cuts and decide whether you've got it just right or not. Or you can test it. Just make sure that it's what you want and you're happy with the squareness of your cuts. And finally, you come back to this final hole, which again has not been drilled into the wood. You're just looking at the wood here through this hole. And you again make use a self-centering bit to make a pilot hole straight down the center once you've got a good alignment. And then you'll put in your final screw, which is a nice tight fit and locks it down into position into perfectly square alignment. The summary is you want three holes pre-drilled into your aluminum track, a countersunk pivot hole and a larger non-countersunk hole and a smaller counter, non-countersunk straight hole for final setting. And then you just use the square to align to the track. And you, that is as accurate as any method. Throughout the rest of this video, you're probably going to see this sled with these two runners on it. And it's just because that's what I was using at the time I shot those, that footage. But then I got tired of this and I switched to the T-Track runner. Also notice there's a little bit of handwork here to just bullnose this. Now I have a stop block I've made out of the piece I removed from here. And I've cut it to the right height. I think the hole's in the right place. And I've made my own match fit system. I don't know if they call this a lug or what they call this. Goes behind. That's out of aluminum. And then here, and then this goes right on. I have a washer somewhere. And then that'll pull it tight and be nice and snug. And so there is my stop block. It goes all the way across. It hits my runner. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> And when I'm not using it, it stores back here on the channel I made and it's a little higher, so it's pulled off the back. It's pulled off the, the table. And so it just stores neatly right back here, just looking up over and it looks nice. I just got my new Infinity Super General 42 uh, Thin Curve saw blade. And uh, you can see it's shiny. It's got a nickel coating. It's from Italy and it's ridiculously sharp. It's far sharper than the other blades I have. And this is a tall cut here I'm going to make.
This is the block I want to put on. We've colored it. So it you know, has a little bit of a warning sign, but it also looks cool. I would, I would do this side too, but it takes too long. <laughs> Just, I'm going to do these two surfaces. This is the first sled I made after I got my new saw. It did take a couple of days to really get right and and I hope you've enjoyed watching and learning how to build this because I use mine all the time and I expect you will use yours too. The second sled I made was a quick 45 degree sled and both of these sleds helped me make my big sled which is in another video. So I hope all of these tutorials help you Put your collection of sleds together and enjoy your table saw. This is David Siegel for Cutting Through the Noise. <laughs>